welcome back now what we are going to do is so if you remember we have initially we have amplified a particular gene of interest from our uh, mouse spleen cdna and after the pcr amplification we digested it and along with that we digested the vector in which we wanted to ligate them following which we ligated our gene of interest into the digested vector and till that uh, step you are already familiar now what we are going to do is we have our ligated product and the overarching goal of all these experiments is to finally get a construct which contains only the gene of our interest and from which we can isolate dna and use that dna for certain experiments and also later on from that dna we can get the protein which that dna codes for and use that protein purify that protein and use it for certain other experiments in order to achieve that the next step that we must do is we need to transform this dna into chemi chemically competent bacterial cells so what do i mean by chemically competent bacterial cells so the goal of our experiment the next goal of our experiment is to in simple terms insert our ligation product into the bacteria and how do we do this so normally bacteria will not take up dna foreign dna foreign plasmids or even if they do that the efficiency is extremely low less than 1% but we cannot do our experiment with such odds so we need to turn the odds in our favor and in order to do that what we do is we make our bacterial cells chemically competent to take up foreign dna so i will give you a brief explanation not too detailed a brief explanation of how we make chemically competent cells so the exact mechanism is not known but we all know that dna is negatively charged and the basic idea is if you can grow your if you have your bacterial cells and you incubate them in ice cold conditions with positively charged metal ions such as calcium or magnesium or rubidium then the bacterial cell wall gets coated with these positively charged ions and once you have these competent cells and you add your dna dna being negatively charged now gets attracted to the positive positively charged divalent cations which are present on the bacterial cell wall keep in mind that i am giving a very simple simplified explanation of how to make competent cells you will learn these in detail elsewhere so we have our chemically treated bacterial cells which are treated with normally what we use is calcium chloride and these treated uh, bacterial cells to this we add our dna our ligation product we add say 1 microliter of our ligation product and since dna is negatively charged it will get coated on the bacterial cell surface since that surface is coated with divalent cations positively charged cat divalent ions once we have done that we keep that mixture in ice one point that you need to always remember is when you are working with competent cells you need to keep them cold always the reason being that the mechanism by which dna is taken up involves a process called heat shock so only at that stage will the bacterial cells be exposed to heat before that they are always to be kept when under storage conditions they are to be kept in minus 80 degree centigrade and when you are working with them when you take them out from the minus 80 degree centigrade fridge you immediately keep them in ice when you are adding dna to the bacterial competent cells you do that while keeping the tube in ice when you let them incubate for half an hour or one hour you maintain that condition in ice in the fridge and only when you are ready to proceed further when you are ready to actually transform your dna that is insert your dna into the bacterial cells only then what we do is we take the bacterial cells the vial in which they are kept along with the dna and we put them in a 42 degree centigrade water bath 
for 45 seconds. What happens is, because of the sudden heat shock, if you remember they were stored for their entire lifetime in minus 80 degree centigrade. Once we began the experiment in the initial phase, they were kept at 4 degree centigrade. After DNA was added, they were still incubated at four, uh, in ice, they were kept in ice, not at 4 degree centigrade, they were always kept in ice. And only during process of trans, uh, transformation, they are suddenly kept in 42 degree centigrade for a very short duration of 45 seconds. Because of this heat shock, what happens is the cell wall of the bacteria cracks open. There are slight fissures and cracks and the DNA that is coated on the surface of the bacteria gets internalized. Immediately after the heat shock, we put them in ice again. We put the vial containing the DNA and bacterial cells, competent cells in ice. We keep them for around 5 minutes. You can keep them for 2 to 10 minutes. I usually prefer to keep them on ice for 5 minutes to sort of help the bacterial cells recover. And after that, what we do is, we add some nutritive media. So, I will use LB media. We add some LB media and allow these cells to grow for one and a half hours at 37 degree centigrade. So, the cells will proliferate and keep in mind that our ligation product is present in a vector, in a plasmid which has antibiotic resistance marker. But immediately after heat shock, we keep them in ice and when we add LB, we do not add any antibiotic because till now they are not expressing the gene product to work against the antibiotics. So, we just add simple media and allow the bacteria to proliferate for one and a half hours. During this time, they will start expressing the antibiotic resistant gene and after one and a half hours, what we will do is we will take LB agar plates containing the appropriate antibiotic and onto that we will take say 20 microliters of that LB broth and we will plate them onto the plate, keep them in 37 degree centigrade incubator overnight and it is expected that the next day you will get colonies and those colonies will contain bacterial cells which contain the plasmid which you have prepared. So, the instrument that I have here behind me is a minus 80 degree centigrade freezer as you can see it is now maintained at minus 81 degree centigrade. So, this is a very important instrument in any molecular biology or experimental biochemistry laboratory, because many of our bacterial cells or uh, constructs are stored here. And so, what I am going to do is, I will just open the fridge and I will show you how it is arranged and how all the metal racks are kept and how we all have different boxes containing our different bacterial uh, plasmid constructs. But uh, the whole objective for our next step is that I will take out a vial of chemically competent DH5 alpha bacterial cells and I will keep them in ice. So, the last process or the actual process required for an experiment, I have to do it very fast because I ideally should not take out the whole box and ideally once I take out the vial from minus 80, I cannot roam around holding it in my hand, I have to immediately put in ice. So, uh, during that portion, I will not be able to talk much, but before that, I am giving you an overview. So, this is our minus eight, one of our minus 80 degree centigrade freezers in our laboratory and uh, so, I will just open it once and see it is covered in ice, right. And we have different, so you see we have DH5 alpha boxes here, we have different plates containing different types of cells, cell stocks and all these are metal, so be very careful. I am wearing normal gloves, but ideally you should wear cryoprotective gloves while working with uh, minus 80 degree centigrade, but if you are experienced like me and if you are a quick worker, normal gloves are fine. So, what I am going to do is, I will just open my cell stock. Notice that I am not taking out the box, I will just look for my cells and I have here an ice bucket. So, what I am going to do is, I am just going to take a vial, immediately put it in ice and I will close the minus 80 degree centigrade freezer. So, keep in mind that for normal conditions, you should not keep 
the minus 80 degree centigrade freezer open for so long. I just kept it open so that you could get a view, but normally this is a very important uh, instrument which contains a lot of very priceless reagents which are not to be handled frivolously. So, normally when you are working in the lab, you immediately open the minus 80 degree centigrade, take out what you want and you proceed. You do not keep the door open. Today, just for an educational purpose, I kept it open for some time. So, the bottom line is when you are working with minus 80 degree centigrade, you have to be fast. And if possible, wear cryoprotectant gloves because it is actually very cold. The metal surfaces do not touch them for too long or you might get some cold burn. Uh, that is it. So, what I have here in my ice bucket is uh, a vial containing chemically competent DH5 alpha cells. So, it is labeled as that DH5 alpha C, C is for competent. We made this a couple of weeks ago and if you prepare them correctly, they can be fine for several months. And also in this vial, what I have is our ligation product. What we have already done in our previous videos, we uh, prepared a ligation product. So, this is that and what I am going to do in our next step is take a small volume maybe 1 microliter of DNA from the ligation product vial and add it to the competent DH5 alpha cells. So, this vial I am not taking it out of ice because that will uh, defeat the whole purpose of the experiment. So, this vial contains 50 microliters of competent DH5 alpha cells. So, what we are going to do next is add the DNA to the competent cell which you will be seeing subsequently. So, we have taken out our chemically competent DH5 alpha E. coli cells and we have kept them in ice and along with that we also have our ligation product also in ice. So, what I am going to do now is I will take 1 microliter of our ligation product and add it to our competent DH5 alpha cells. This vial contains 50 microliter of competent cells. So, it depends on how you have prepared, how many aliquots you have prepared. Couple of weeks earlier when I prepared these competent cells, I had made maybe 100 aliquots of 50 microliters each. You can make smaller aliquots and increase the number of vials you have or vice versa. So, I am now going to set my pipette at 1 microliter because that is the amount of DNA that I am going to be adding to competent cells. So, you can add slightly more DNA as well, you can add maybe 2 microliters or 3 microliters if required, but one should be fine. We tested our competent cells earlier with different constructs, uh, so they are very nicely competent. So, even 1 microliter of DNA is sufficient for our purposes. So, So, the DNA I can take out, I can take out and it was stored in minus 20 earlier, but it has already thawed. So, what I am going to do is I am going to take 1 microliters of the ligation product and since you are working with small volumes, always check visually whether you have actually taken out 1 microliter or whether you are just taking up air. But uh, now that that is done, I am not going to take out the vial of competent cells. I will keep it embedded in ice because I do not want it to warm up. So, if you are a very fast worker, you could just take out the vial immediately add the DNA, mix it and put it back. Some people do it that way, even I do it that way, but now for uh, this demonstration purpose, what I am going to do is, I will not really take it out too much, I will just wait just a second. So, I will just open this vial and keeping it embedded in ice, I will just add the DNA and I will thoroughly mix it, give it a gentle swirl, close it and leave it in ice. Make sure it is cold. So, now what is happening is, I will just cover this. So, what is happening is that the DNA is being incubated with the bacterial cells under cold conditions and we will keep it in this manner for at least one hour. If you are in a hurry, you might reduce it by maybe 10 or 15 minutes at max, but my advice is keep it for at least one hour or 
if you are in too much of a hurry maybe 45 or 50 minutes do not reduce the incubation time below that because that will reduce the efficiency of your transformation and ultimately you will get lesser number of colonies or maybe no colonies at all the next day. So, what we are going to do is since we have time today we will leave it in ice for one hour let me just release the pipette. Another point is <coughs> you have to keep an eye on the ice if you leave it like this. So, since ours is a tropical country it gets very hot during summers if I just leave it like this after one hour all I will see is that maybe the ice has melted and the tubes are floating around that is bad that will defeat the entire purpose of the experiment. So, always keep an eye and make sure that you keep refilling the ice or packing it tightly. So, that most of it does not melt or what you can do is you can take this entire ice bucket and keep it in the 4 degree fridge. So, these uh, modifications are applicable only when the ice can melt quickly like in our case during summer it gets very hot, but if you live in a if your lab is in a very cold place all the ACs are always on and you do not have an issue then you do not need to carry out these modifications. What I am going to do is I will just make sure that the DNA and uh, bacterial cells are incubated for an hour after which we are going to proceed to our next step. So, we have been incubating our ligation product with the chemically competent DH 5 alpha cells for an hour now. Next what we are going to do is we are going to take out our uh, vial containing the DNA mixed with the competent cells and what I am going to do is I will go I am going to move on to the step of heat shock. So, this instrument that we have here is a water bath which is being maintained at 42 degree centigrade. What I will do is I will take the vial keep it here for 45 seconds and once it is done I will again take it out and put it back in ice to let the cells recover for 2 to 5 minutes. So, before that I am going to I have a timer with me I am going to set up the timer to 45 seconds because transformation you need to be sort of careful of the numbers. If you have the temperature at 42 degree centigrade you give a heat shock for 45 seconds. Now, suppose instead of 42 degree centigrade you you have a bath which is at maybe 40 degrees. Does that mean heat shock will not work or you cannot carry out heat shock? No, what you do is you increase the time duration for which you are keeping your cells under heated condition. So, suppose instead of 42 degree it is at 40 degree then instead of 45 seconds you can keep it for maybe 65 seconds. However, keep in mind that do not go below temperatures of 38 and also more importantly do not go beyond temperatures of 42 degree centigrade because then the transformation efficiency will be really low and if it is too hot you might actually uh, harm the bacterial cells. So, my uh, take on this uh, point is at 42 degree centigrade heat shock for 45 seconds if it is at 40 degree then just go a bit longer increase it by 15 seconds and at 42 de at 40 degree give a heat shock for maybe 1 minute do not go below 40, 40 or 39 degree centigrade and do not go beyond 42 degree centigrade. So, my timer is set up I will just remove the lid for the water bath and the vial which contained the mixture of DNA and competent cells I will just leave it in water and I started my timer. So, once 45 seconds is over since this is at 42 degree I will just take it out and put it back in ice to let the bacterial cells recover. So, to recapitulate what is happening during the heat shock step is that because throughout its entire lifetime it has been either at minus 80 degree centigrade or at present at 0 degree it has actually never encountered heat. So, because of this sudden change in temperature it undergoes a heat shock which results in the bacterial cell wall slightly cracking open and it is through these cracks that the plasmid DNA which we have incubated with the cells gets internalized. So, my 45 seconds is over what I will do is I will put it back in ice and 
we will leave it in ice and allow the bacterial cells to recover from the heat shock for 2 to 5 minutes. So, the instrument that I have behind me is a laminar airflow cabinet and what we are going to use it for is when we work with bacterial cultures and we need to maintain a high amount of sterility, this instrument is necessary. So, what it does is it maintains a positive pressure airflow which prevents air from the outside into entering this region. Once I remove this lid and switch it on, there will be a positive pressure airflow which will be blowing preventing the normal air from entering and apart from that right now we have a UV lamp which is switched on you will see that there is some bluish reflections from the metal surface. So, basically we have an ultraviolet lamp on top. So, what it is doing is it is ensuring that the inside is sterile. Uh, once it uh, finishes its cycle only then can we switch on the laminar airflow and take out the lid and start our work. So, we have switched on the laminar airflow and now we will begin our work. Uh, remember during normal experimental uh, procedure you should not talk too much while working in the laminar airflow because you do not want you to forcefully spit into this and contaminate the entire place. However, for this demonstration I have to talk, so I am talking, but do not learn this portion. What you should notice is when I begin is I take some ethanol, spray it all over the surface and give a nice wipe down to further sterilize the surface. I know that there is a UV lamp and it is going to keep the internal uh, area sterile, but even beyond that it is a good practice to always wipe down the laminar airflow hood with 70 percent ethanol before you begin your work. And also after your work you should again wipe it, so that the next person gets a very sterile place to work in. So, now that I have wiped it up, I am going to take our stuff that we need for the experiment, switch on the like not switch on, just turn on the burner. So, just to create a sterile zone here. <coughs> Excuse me. So, what I am going to do is I have 50 microliters of bacterial competent cell to which DNA has been added and it has undergone heat shock and it is now being incubated in ice for roughly 5 minutes. Uh, 5 minutes is not over, it is going to be over soon, I can see it in my timer. So, next what I am going to do is I am going to add 450 microliters of LB to those uh, bacterial cells. So, first, so this is autoclaved LB, it is sterile, right. So, I am going to just get things ready. Make sure that your LB stock does not get contaminated. In case it gets contaminated overnight, you will see that it has turned cloudy and then you have to discard your media. So, yes, 5 minutes is over. I will just stop the timer and now what I will do is add take 450 microliters of this media. So, now you can take out your bacterial cells, because so I added 450 microliter to the bacterial cells and I am mixing them thoroughly. And next what we are going to do is we are going to let them grow at 37 degrees for 1 and half hours. So, now it is no longer mandatory to keep it in ice, you can keep it in a normal centrifuge holder as well. Let me just take care of my media, so that we can use it again uh, in the evening. And yes, I will also release my pipette. So, now you can actually take a couple of minutes to make sure that your pipette is released and you have turned off the 
spirit lamp and you have taken care of your media. But during the earlier step of heat shock, timing was more crucial. But now it's okay. So if you can see, it's slightly turbid because there is already 50 microliter of bacterial cells to which we've added media. And what you will see is after one and a half hours of growth at 37 degrees centigrade, much of the bacteria, there is much more population of bacteria. So there is some growth and proliferation. I will again repeat that although the construct that we have has some antibiotic resistance, but now we added plain media, we did not add any antibiotic to this because till now the bacteria has not had time to, uh, after internalizing the plasmid, it has not had time to start expressing the antibiotic resistant gene products. So if we add the antibiotic right now, the bacteria will die. It is only after growing it in LB for one and a half hours at 37 degrees centigrade. After that, when we plate on an antibiotic LB agar plate, only then will it be able to survive in that antibiotic condition in case it has internalized our plasma. So that is the way in which we know which of the bacterial cells have been successfully transformed and which have not. So, those bacteria which have taken up the plasmid will now be resistant to the antibiotic in the plate, while those which did not will die on the plate and will not grow overnight in the plate. So, that is that. Now, what I am going to do is we are going to put this in the shaker incubator at 37 degree centigrade and let it grow for one and a half hours. So, this is the vial to which we added the LB without antibiotic and I am just putting it here and now what I am going to do is, yes, so this is a 37 degree centigrade shaker incubator. It is going to maintain the temperature at 37 degree centigrade and once we put it in here, so at, at present it is a 36 because we opened it and it was just switched on. So, but it is set at 37 and it is going to reach that in a couple of minutes and also the RPM that we have set, uh, we set it at around 200 RPM. So, that is the condition under which this is going to be kept for the next one and a half hours to allow it to grow. I, because of the tissue, you probably cannot see the vial, but the vial is inside and it is under constant shaking condition in order to ensure, I will switch on the light, in order to ensure that it is properly aerated and the bacteria can grow uh, in a optimum temperature condition. After one and a half hours, what we are going to do is, we are going to take a certain amount of this uh, bacterial culture and plate it on an LB agar plate, which contains the appropriate antibiotic for this construct. And so now we are going to leave it for one and a half hours, let it grow. And meanwhile, what we are going to do is, we are going to pour a few LB agar plates, which I am going to show in the next part of the video. So, first what we are going to do is, for pouring plates is, give the surface a nice wipe down using 70 percent ethanol. Normally, you should not talk while working in the lab, but this is an exceptional case. Okay. So, what I have here is LB agar and it was autoclaved at 121 degree centigrade for 15 minutes and then maintained at 65 degrees. Once it reaches around 55, 50 to 55, we are going to add the antibiotic to this. Okay? So, as I was saying, this is the LB agar and once it reaches around 50, 55 degree centigrade, we can add the antibiotic to this. If we add the antibiotic at an earlier stage, what will happen is the antibiotic might get degraded because it is too hot. So, it will take maybe another few minutes to cool down sufficiently to add antibiotic. So, what I am going to do is, we have, so these are sterile petri plates. So, we purchase them in sterile condition. So, 
I'm just going to open them and make them ready for use while the LB agar cools. Sometimes the packets are too good, it's hard to open them. So, I'm going to add 200 microliters of the antibiotic to the LV agar. Yes, it's now cool enough for adding the particular antibiotic. So, different plates have different antibiotics based upon what construct you want to grow on them. So, some might be canamycin, some might be chloramphenicol, some might be ampicillin. So, it depends. So, this is my antibiotic, I am just taking it and what I am going to do is, I am going to add it to the LV agar, give it a nice ensure that it is uniformly mixed. And the issue here is we cannot let this cool down too much, because if it cools down below a certain temperature, it is going to start solidifying. That is why at around 55, we add the antibiotic and then what we do is, we start pouring the plates. So, I poured the plate, keep it semi covered. four plates and what we are going to do is, we are going to let these solidify. So, it is going to take some time for these plates to solidify. So, what we did was, we had taken this plate. So, this was a sterile plate, I am not pouring media, but I will just open it to show you what it is like. So, there is an inner dish and an outer lid, the diameter of the outer lid is greater than the dish, so that it can cover it. And what we did was, so, you see the dish, we tried to ensure that maybe two thirds of it is covered with the LB agar media and the rest of it is kept uh, empty and after we pour it and it solidifies, we are going to close the lid and leave it like this until we are ready to plate our bacteria. Also, keep in mind that during storage, plates are always stored upside down and not like this because otherwise the condensation that might develop will fall the condensation that develops on the lid might fall onto the plate surface, the LV agar media surface and make it watery and also hamper the bacterial growth and so on and so forth. So, normally when you store plates, so now it is what you see is the dish contains the media and you cover it like this. But when we are going to store this in the fridge or elsewhere, you have to keep it upside down, because otherwise condensation which develops on the top of the lid, you can already see some, because it is hot, there is some condensation, right. So, if you leave it like this, this condensation, the water droplets will drip off and fall onto the uh, LB agar bed and that is not good lab practice. To avoid that, you have to keep it like this when you are storing it or even when after plating you are keeping it.
slightly changes and it becomes more wheatish in nature. I don't know if you can see it uh, or if you can appreciate the color change, but while working in the lab with experience you will be able to notice these differences and this is a good point to look forward to, look towards when judging whether the plate has solidified. Uh, however, if you leave it for around 20 minutes it will solidify along with the color change and then what you will do is since these have solidified I am just going to put the lid on for all of these and then a very important fact that you must keep in mind is you need to label these plates. You need to label whether they are LB agar and what antibiotic is present and on which date you made it and you should also keep your initials because in case you are in a big lab people should be able to know which plate was made by whom and so that when you are storing them, storing them in the 4 degree centigrade fridge they do not get mixed up and you can keep a track of things. Also when labeling mandatorily you must label the bottom dish because the lids might get interchanged. You can additionally label them on the lid but whatever you do the lower dish must be labeled because that is where the LB agar media is and that is where the bacterial colonies will grow. Because by mistake in case you interchange the lids and the lower dish is not labeled and only the lids are labeled then you are going to draw completely wrong conclusions if a switching happens. So, what I am going to do is now I am going to take a marker and I am going to label this as LB agar with the antibiotic and also today's date and my initials. So, it will be something like this I do not know if you can see it. So, LB agar the antibiotic the date my initials they should be there and once it is ready you keep them in the inverted position. As I was mentioning earlier the plates, so when pouring they were in this position now that they have solidified and they have been labeled we have to keep them in the inverted position because you will notice already there is some condensation because of the heat that came out of the warm media. So, if we keep on storing it in this condition after some time the water droplets will fall on the bed and that will create a mess, it is not good lab practice it makes the media soggy, the surface soggy and it should be avoided. I will just label all four of them and meanwhile if you remember we have been uh, growing our transformed bacteria with LB in the 37 degree shaker incubator. So, it is almost one and a half hours there are uh, there is some time left once one and a half hours is completed what I am going to do is I am going to plate a small amount of culture from that onto these plates and then we are going to leave these plates in the 37 degree centigrade incubator overnight and by next day we are going to get bacterial colonies which contain our gene of interest. This is because the gene of interest is in a particular vector and that vector has an antibiotic resistance marker. So, the bacteria which have successfully taken up the DNA, they will be able to survive in the corresponding antibiotic and hence they will be able to grow in LB agar plates containing that antibiotic but those cells which did not take up the DNA they are not going to survive on the plate containing that and particular antibiotic and hence if we get colonies when we get colonies you can be more or less certain that those are the DNA uh, those are the bacteria which took up the plasmid DNA. Of course, subsequently what we need to do is from those bacteria also we need to make cell stocks and isolate plasmid DNA again and send them for sequencing to finally confirm if our gene of interest is present or not, but getting colonies is a preliminary indication that transformation has occurred and from there we will move on to the next experiments.
let me just finish labeling the last plate then we are going to move on Yes, now that we are done, we can move on to the next part of our experiment. So, now what I am going to do is we prepared four different plates, right? So, two of them I am going to store for subsequent use in the future. So, what I am taking is I am taking parafilm. So, it is basically a type of sealant. So, what I am going to do is these two plates I am going to store. So, we take the parafilm and it is very stretchable. So, as we keep stretching it creates an airtight seal and in this manner once the entire petri dish has been sealed so that it does not suddenly open up we are going to store it in 4 degree centigrade for now I am just setting it aside. I will take another strip of parafilm remove the protective cover and I will store this plate as well. So, it is basically like a sealant, a stretchable sealant with which we are sealing the prepared petri plates and what we are going to do is later on once this experiment is over, I am going to just take them and store them in the 4 degree centigrade fridge. So, these two plates we are going to use for today's uh, next step of the experiment. First, I am going to switch on the burner or turn on the burner, the spirit lamp. <coughs> and uh, so, this is the media containing our hopefully transformed cells after it has been grown at 37 degree centigrade for one and a half hours. You will notice it has become turbid because of the growth of bacteria. And so, this contains 450 microliter of LB and we originally had 50 microliter of bacterial cells, competent cells and we had added 1 microliter of DNA. So, out of this 450 microliter what I am going to do is, so I have two plates, in one of them I am going to take 200 microliter of the culture, put it at the center of the plate and then spread it across the entire plate using a spreader. I am going to show you how it is done in the next couple of minutes. And in another plate what I am going to do is I am going to take a smaller amount 10 times less. So, since I took 200 microliter for this what I am going to do is I am going to take 20 microliter of culture and spread it on the other plate. So, in case transformation efficiency is very good maybe in 200 microliter we might not be able to get single colonies. We will have a lawn of colonies in which case in 20 microliters we will be able to get well dispersed and spread out colonies which will help us uh, to uh, discreetly identify separate colonies. For that reason, we are going to make two plates having a tenfold difference in the amount of culture that is being plated. Before we can begin plating, uh, <coughs> so I have a glass spreader here and it is dipped in 70, uh, 70 percent ethanol to make it sterile. So, what we do is once you take it out you add the um, uh, bacterial culture to the surface of the plate after removing the lid and then you just spread it around using this. So, you need to make sure that this surface does not contain any other bacteria other than the bacteria which you have been using for the transformation. So, for, for that purpose you have to sterilize it in 70 percent ethanol. So, that is what I am doing, I am making sure that the entire surface is dipped in 70 percent ethanol. And after that what I am doing is, I am holding it to the flame. So, holding it to the flame ensures that the ethanol is removed because as you know 70 percent ethanol 
kills bacteria, right? It is for sterilization purpose. So, in case your spreader after you have sterilized it with 70 percent ethanol contains a residual amount of ethanol and with that if you spread your transformed bacteria, there is always a very high chance that you are going to end up killing your bacteria then and there. So, to remove the ethanol, ethanol is volatile, right? So, to remove the ethanol, we are just heating it up in the burner. I am going to repeat the process again, so that you can see it one more time. I am dipping it in ethanol and I am going to heat it in the burner to evaporate the ethanol and dry it out completely, cool it for some time and then I am going to use it to plate, to spread the culture. So, first I am going to spread 200 microliters of cultures. So, keep in mind that all this information should be labeled on your petri plate, because unless it is properly labeled, you are going to be making mistakes in the subsequent steps. So, I will set, no, I will just use this pipette. They are both the same, it is just that I prefer using my own pipette. So, what I am going to do is, I am going to set the volume at 200 microliters. And once that is done, I am going to take 200 microliters of this. So, now when we spread the plate, we need to invert the plate again. So, now it is kept in the normal conventional, not conventional, normal position where you take out the lid. mix thoroughly, so that you take sufficient amount of cells and I am going to add this to the center of the plate. Keep it in the center of the plate, release the pipette quickly. So, you need to be a bit fast in this sort of work, but it is nothing to worry about with practice you are going to get there eventually and my spreader, it was dipped in 70 percent ethanol, it is sterilized and now I am getting, getting rid of the ethanol. So, you will see that the ethanol gets burnt off, it gets burnt off, you have to be thorough, so that there is no residual ethanol left. And then you have to cool the spreader. So, Initially, it had ethanol. If you use that to spread it, you are going to kill your cells because 70 percent ethanol is for sterilization. You do not want to kill your cells, that is why you are heating it in the burner. The ethanol being volatile, it just goes away, it gets burnt off. But now the spreader is hot, it is very hot. So, if you use this and dip it into the culture that you put on this plate, again you are going to kill your bacteria. So, just cool it keep it out for maybe at least a minute, around a minute and what I do is, I just sort of wave it around to cool it and then see, I added the culture to the middle. So, normally when you are working with petri plates, do not touch it, I am just pointing at it from a distance, I added the culture in the middle. So, the corners do not have culture. So, in case the spreader is still warm, I am just touching the culture at the corners to ensure that the heat, residual heat gets dissipated and it comes as close to the ambient temperature as possible. Once that is done, now what I am going to do is, I am going to use it to spread the culture uniformly across the entire surface. So, so what I am going to do is, I use the spreader and then using my hands, I keep turning it while I am so, there is a rotational motion with one hand and there is a translational motion with the other. I am just moving the spreader up and down and with my other hand, I am just rotating the plate, so that the 200 microliter culture gets evenly spread across the entire surface of the plate. Uh, so, when do you stop? So, 200 microliters is a is quite a large amount of culture. So, initially when you start spreading, it will feel very slippery.
so next we are going to plate 20 microliters of the culture my spreader is already in ethanol again i use this for spreading the 200 microliter but after that i put it in ethanol and uh, let me just get rid of the ethanol burn it off in the burner so i do it twice i dip it in ethanol once thoroughly get it sterilized with 70 percent ethanol then i heat it in the burner flame to get rid of the ethanol and then i again dip it in ethanol and repeat that so i just do it twice now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take 20 microliters of the culture and plate it on a different plate i have labeled it as a 20 microliter plate so i'll just take the culture 20 microliters add it to the center of the plate do not just scatter it all over the surface because you need to keep the surfaces of the plate devoid of bacterial culture because initially you are going to help cool your spreader by touching those surfaces so you don't want your bacterial culture to be there and get killed by the heat so i'm again reheating the surface sterilized spreader glass spreader and once the ethanol has been burnt off I am satisfied that there is no residual ethanol left. What I am going to do is, I am going to again cool it. If it is too hot, it is going to kill my bacteria. And if bacteria are dead, you cannot get any colonies, there is nothing left to grow, right. So, now I am just going to cool it quickly. So, a rule of thumb is keep it like this for maybe around 60 seconds, close to a minute and i repeat once again that normally when you are working in the laminar airflow hood you should not talk because as i am talking there is a possibility that i might spit into the lab or the breathing that i am doing it might overcome the positive pressure of the laminar flow and i have an open plate here right so in case i am spitting then bacteria from my mouth might also be there and who knows maybe it is resistant to this antibiotic in which case i will get a false colony so, when you are working and when you are carrying out your experiments or even when I am doing my exper uh, experiments, no talking in front of the hood. For this demonstration purpose, it cannot be helped, but always keep in mind, the lesser you speak, the better. So, it is cool I believe, I am just going to touch the spreader to the edges of the plate, so that in case there is any residual heat it gets dissipated into the media not on the culture which is at the center of the plate and once i am ready now i just do this to and fro motion with one hand for the spreader and with my other hand what i am doing is i am rotating the plate this will ensure uniform spreading of the culture so you cannot see this but since i added only 20 microliters compared to the earlier plate where there was 200 microliters it does not take too long I can already feel that the slipperiness because of the liquid is going away since it is getting you properly spread it is actually becoming uh, sort of uh, what to say stickier and drier already which means that the spreading is actually complete so yeah spreading is complete I am going to stop here I am going to put on the lid and keep this for sterilization always keep in mind when you are spreading that the your hand should have a uniform pressure if you put in too much pressure there is always a chance that you are going to break apart clumps of the lb agar and so you will ruin your plate so your hands should be steady and there should be a steady uniform pressure and you should be rotating your plate uniformly too much pressure can actually break the lb agar plate into fragments and crumbs and that is going to mess up your experiment. So, going back to our experiment that we are demonstrating today, these are the two plates which have 200 microliter and 20 microliter of the bacterial culture. I am not adding parafilm to these. To these plates which I am going to store in the 4 degree centigrade fridge and use on a subsequently later date, I have added parafilm, but these I have already used. So, what I am going to do is, now I am just going to put them in the 37 degree incubator and leave them overnight for the bacteria to grow. So, what we have here the instrument next to me is the 37 degree centigrade 
incubator. There is no shaking component to this and what we use this for is to keep our LB plates containing bacteria that we have spread on it, keep them inside and allow them to grow at 37 degree centigrade overnight. You can also set it at other temperatures depending upon the temperature that your bacterial culture requires, but mostly since we work with E. coli and the type of work that we do, we need 37 degree usually. So, that is what this instrument is set at and so, I am just going to open this. And so, these two plates that we plated, the plates that we plated, I am now putting them inside and so, we will keep them here. We will leave them overnight and tomorrow we will see if at all we have any colonies. In case we do not have any colonies, that is a problem that means our experiment failed and there could be many reasons for that. One reason is maybe the bacterial cells that we used were not competent or they lost their competence because of storage. Another reason could be that they were competent, but while handling them, while we were taking them out, before adding DNA, maybe while taking it out from the minus 80 degree centigrade fridge, maybe we kept it in our hands for too long and therefore, we messed up the competence of the cells that could be another reason if we do not get colonies. Another reason could be that while plating we the spreader was too hot, we killed the bacteria. So, there could be many different reasons if we do not get colonies and we will have to troubleshoot them subsequently. However, if we get colonies that means that the bacteria which survived in this antibiotic plate have successfully taken up our ligation product which contains an antibiotic resistance gene in the plasmid which enable them to survive here. And once we get colonies, we are going to subsequently make cell stocks and isolate plasmid from them and send them for sequencing to finally establish whether we have our gene of interest in them or not. So, yesterday we had put two plates containing our ligation product transformed into DH5 alpha competent cells and plated onto LB agar containing the appropriate antibiotic. So, those two plates today morning I came and collected them and I sealed them with parafilm and stored them in 4 degree centigrade uh, until for the need. So, I have taken them out and I am going to show them to you. So, these are the two plates. We had plated 200 microliters here and 20 microliters here. You will notice that in the 200 microliters, the number of colonies is much more and also some of the, many of the colonies are very small because of the space crunch. So, there was a lot of transformed bacteria as a result of which in 200 microliters, it is more culture, so more bacteria and in this limited space, they could not grow as much as these in the 20 microliters. See, even this has a lot of bacteria, but you will see that the sizes of the colonies seem to be a bit more. Also notice that there will be some colonies which have merged together. So, maybe two colonies side by side. I do not know if you can see it here, but when working you will be able to see, you might see this that uh, two colonies growing too close to each other when kept overnight they might just merge and create a larger blob. So, when you are going to pick single colonies for your experiment, make sure that you avoid picking such colonies which are merged cluster of colonies. It is very good practice, in fact it is almost mandatory to take perfectly single colonies when working with such uh, bacteria. So, that is one point that you need to ensure. Also once you have kept them in the 37 degree centigrade incubator for sufficient time and you come in the morning and see that there might be overgrowth or there is enough enough growth, you can't keep them indefinitely in 37 degree centigrade because if you keep them instead of one day, if you keep them for two or three days, these colonies will keep growing larger, larger, larger and then they will all merge together to form a lawn and then you will not be able to collect single colonies. So, once in the morning you come, you plate in the evening, you leave the lab, in the morning first thing that you do is you check if there are any colonies. In case there are colonies and they have grown to sufficient size and there is sufficient number, 
by sufficient uh, what i mean is you will learn that through experience when the colonies are round and well apart and not too small not too large you should take out the plates seal them with paraffin and store them in 4 degree centigrade to prevent further continuation of growth which might lead to a lawn formation to summarize this set of exper experiments that you have been observing in this week initially we had pcr amplified a particular gene of interest from a particular dna source and after pcr amplification what we had done is we had digested them with a particular set of restriction enzymes and also the vector into which we wanted to clone the gene that was digested with the same set of restriction enzymes after digestion for both these uh, components we had ligated them together and after ligation what we did was we transformed them into chemically competent dh5 alpha e coli cells and after transformation we plated them on lb agar media containing the appropriate antibiotic which is dictated by the vector which you are using or the plasmid which you are using depending on the plasmid what antibiotic resistance gene it encodes for you use an lb agar plate containing that exact same antibiotic we did that and as i showed you just now uh, after uh, growing them at 37 degree centigrade incubator overnight we also have colonies next what are we going to do with this uh, with these colonies what we are going to do is subsequently we will or you should since it's your experiment what you should do is you should take one single colony use a pipette tip scrape off one single colony ensuring that you do not touch any other colonies put it in a small amount of lb media maybe 5 ml of lb media with the same antibiotic grow it overnight so now what you will have is a culture containing bacteria from that particular single colony once you grow it overnight what you can do is the next day you can isolate plasmid from it and also make a small cell stock so take 500 microliters of that cell culture add 500 microliters of glycerol to it in an eppendorf tube mix it thoroughly and store it in minus 80 degree centigrade this cell culture you can subsequently use for regrowing further bacterial cultures because see from the plate you have already picked the colony you no longer have it on the plate since you have grown 5 ml or 6 ml of it overnight you take 500 microliter in a centrifuge tube add 500 microliter of glycerol and store it in minus 80 degrees and after proper mixing and this will now act as a source for this particular culture so each time you need to grow more of the culture you go to the minus 80 degree centigrade fridge take that vial out immediately scrape off a small speck it will be frozen solid just take a small speck drop it into media containing antibiotic and leave it overnight bacteria will grow from there so what you should be doing is making a cell stock and with the remaining 4 and a half to 5 5 and a half ml of culture that you have from the colony overnight growth of the colony you should isolate plasmid and so we have shown plasmid isolation in other uh, lectures and after you isolate the plasmid what you should do is send it for sequencing only after you get the dna sequenced will you be able to confirm whether your gene of interest is exactly present or not once you see that your sequencing has been uh, successful you need to move on in case you need to express the protein as well you need to retransform the plasmid into bl21 de3 e coli cells so those cells are cells which are meant for protein expression while dh5 alpha cells that we used during the